Otorhinolaryngology is a fascinating field that encompasses the study and treatment of various diseases and disorders affecting the ears, nose, throat, and related structures. One such condition that frequently presents in clinical practice is otitis externa, commonly known as swimmer's ear. This script aims to provide a comprehensive understanding of the pathophysiology, etiology, clinical presentation, diagnostic techniques, treatment options, complications, and preventive measures associated with otitis externa. Otitis externa refers to an inflammatory condition of the external ear canal, which can be acute or chronic. The pathophysiology involves the breakdown of the protective barrier provided by the cerumen, allowing pathogens to infiltrate the skin and cause infection. Inflammation, edema, and subsequent narrowing of the ear canal may occur, leading to symptoms such as pain, discharge, and hearing loss. Numerous factors contribute to the development of otitis externa. Prolonged exposure to water, excessive moisture, and trauma are common predisposing factors. Additionally, individuals with a history of allergic reactions, eczema, seborrheic dermatitis, or compromised immune systems are at an increased risk. Other extrinsic factors, such as the use of hearing aids or the presence of foreign bodies, can also contribute to the development of this condition. Patients with otitis externa typically complain of severe ear pain, which worsens upon manipulation or pressure. Accompanying symptoms may include discharge, pruritus, hearing loss, and a feeling of fullness in the affected ear. Differential diagnoses may encompass conditions like otitis media, furunculosis, eczema, contact dermatitis, or tympanic membrane perforation. Appropriate examination, including otoscopy, is necessary for accurate diagnosis. Otitis externa can be classified into different types based on the extent and severity of the infection. The stages can range from mild inflammation to widespread infection involving deeper tissues. Knowledge of these stages aids in determining appropriate treatment strategies and predicting potential complications in severe cases. Otitis externa is primarily caused by bacterial pathogens, with Pseudomonas aeruginosa being the most common isolated organism. However, other bacteria, such as Staphylococcus aureus and Streptococcus species, may also play a role. Fungal infections, particularly those caused by Congida species, can occur concurrently or as a result of antibiotic use. Understanding the microbiology is crucial in selecting appropriate antimicrobial therapy. Biofilms, complex communities of microorganisms adhering to surfaces, play a significant role in otitis externa. These biofilms provide a protective environment for bacteria, making them less susceptible to antimicrobial agents and resulting in recurrent or chronic infections. Various mechanisms are involved in biofilm formation, such as quorum sensing and production of extracellular polymeric substances, which contribute to the persistence of otitis externa. The diagnosis of otitis externa primarily relies on clinical evaluation, including otoscopic examination. Otoscopy allows visualization of the external ear canal and tympanic membrane, enabling the identification of signs such as erythema, edema, discharge, or even cellulitis. In certain cases, a sample of discharge may be collected for culture and sensitivity testing. Imaging techniques, such as computed tomography, CT, scan, are rarely necessary but may provide additional information in complicated or recurrent cases. The management of acute otitis externa involves several components. Ear canal cleaning, including the removal of debris and excess moisture, is crucial. Topical antimicrobial therapy is the mainstay of treatment, with choices depending on the causative microorganism. Corticosteroids may be utilized to alleviate inflammation and reduce symptoms. Analgesics, both systemic and topical, may be prescribed to control pain. Close follow-up is essential to monitor response and ensure resolution of the infection. Chronic or refractory cases of otitis externa require a comprehensive approach. Identifying and addressing any underlying risk factors, such as allergies or eczema, is crucial. In addition to traditional topical therapy, systemic antimicrobials or antifungals may be necessary. Referral to a specialist for evaluation of complex cases or consideration of more invasive interventions, like surgical debridement or culture-directed therapy, may also be required. Prevention plays a vital role in reducing the incidence of otitis externa. Educating patients about avoiding excessive moisture, taking precautions during water-related activities, and adopting preventive measures, such as using earplugs or drying the ears thoroughly after exposure to water, can significantly decrease the risk. Proper ear hygiene, including refraining from excessive ear cleaning or insertion of foreign objects, should also be emphasized. Failure to diagnose and treat otitis externa promptly can lead to complications. Infection can spread to nearby structures, such as the middle ear or mastoid, causing more severe clinical manifestations and requiring more aggressive management. 
Complications may include otitis media, cellulitis, perichondritis, abscess formation, hearing loss, and rarely, intracranial complications like meningitis or brain abscess. Awareness of these potential complications is crucial to ensure timely intervention. Otitis externa commonly affects pediatric populations, necessitating specific considerations in diagnosis and management. Children may present with unique challenges, such as difficulty in providing a clear history or cooperating for examination. Special attention should be given to prevention strategies, as children are more prone to engaging in water-related activities. The choice of antimicrobial therapy and interventions should be tailored to suit the specific needs of pediatric patients. In conclusion, it is crucial for ENT specialists to have a thorough knowledge of swimmer's ear. This includes understanding its causes, symptoms, diagnosis, treatment, complications, and prevention. By emphasizing prevention, early intervention, and patient education, healthcare providers can effectively manage swimmer's ear and enhance patient outcomes.